Okay, hello. Welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast, the podcast where time is a construct and we are everywhere all at once, all the time, or whatever the Daniel said. I'm Dallas, and I look forward to finding out which movies we forgot about today, because I know there's going to be at least one. Usually is. Yes, usually uh, Gabby, but I'm looking at an empty chair right now, so we'll see what happens. I'm Demi, and yeah, I love this episode welcome to another episode of creative differences podcast your one-stop shop for movie reviews fancast friday step back there says and a number of other pop culture related items today ladies and gentlemen it is the last day of our year in review and being that it's the last day of the year in review we are instead going to look forward and talk about what movies we're looking forward to for the rest of this year yes 2024 in case you are wondering gabby's not here the mere thought of anticipating things gives her anxiety so she could not make it that's fair and it's probably true but also she was supposed to be here so guys make sure you guys like share and subscribe so that you guys can keep up with us for the rest of the year to find out what we actually thought about these movies that we've been anticipating yeah as you know because we've done this five times this year uh year in recaps if person a has something on their list and then person b has it ranked higher we will skip so if cassie has winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 as her number two and demi has it as her number one demi would say skip and we would talk about it at number one that's how that would work it's not gonna happen like that but that's that's you never know i know yes he is a a horror movie fan and b a furry so it's me that's not gonna make that work out be the issue i'm the issue there okay let's get into it because this is gonna be a long one shorter than the rest of them but a long one all the same hey dallas you got any honorable mentions i do i have five give it to me all right honorable mentions are Untitled fourth bad boys film, Transformers 1, Godzilla times Kong, The New Empire, Inside Out 2, and If. All right, my honorable mentions are Inside Out 2, Gladiator 2, Mickey 17, and ISS. What is Mickey 17? It's a sci-fi movie coming out by uh, the guy who directed Parasite. It's starring Robert Pattinson. Uh, Okay. Time is a construct. Anyway. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Number 10. Dallas. Number 10. Kick us off, man. Number 10 for me is Sonic the Hedgehog 3 coming out. I Ooh, figured. Look at that. I figured. My number 10 is Bad Boys 4, directed by Dylan Bilal, written hey. by Chris Brimner, starring Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexander Ludwig, Paula Nunez, Eric Dane, and Yoan Griffin. Uh, IMDb summary. Plot unknown. Fourth installment of the Bad Boys film series. Yep, that's yep. it. It's on here because I like Bad Boys for Life. I like the Bad Boys series. Bad Boys for Life might be my favorite one out of those movies. They're all really good. Yeah. Super stoked about that. Yeah. Just off the one of my favorite strength of the franchise alone. I love Will Smith. I watch anything the man does. I definitely, I probably wouldn't have <laughs> the franchise run this long, but as long as they're going to do it, I'm going to watch it. I think what helps is having ammo there. I really liked the idea mm-hmm. of ammo. Just It gave like some fresh new blood and new ideas into the series. So that adds to my excitement for the film. I like those characters a lot. A little sad that Charles Melton is not in this one, but. Oh, man, that's rough. Yeah. But all the rest of them are, so. Yeah, I like Vanessa Hudgens. I really like Paula Nunez now, ever since that movie came out. Yeah. And then she was in that uh, Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, and Jacob Scipio, I'm pretty sure, is also in it. Duh. He kinda, yeah, he has to be with. Yeah, Al. I don't know why I didn't did lift him one. in the cast, but he's also one of the most exciting parts of that movie for me. So. Man got hands. That's- Good looking cat. Very good looking cat. <laughs> so, so, so very good looking. But yes, we are excited. Keep making bad boys until they can't run anymore. Plus, it's directed by Dylan Bilal again, and they did a great job they with the last really one. Really good job. I'm with it. I'm with it. So, yep, that's my number 10. That takes us to number nine. Number nine. Dallas. What is my number nine? My number nine is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yep. All right. We are skipping past that. I got skipped twice in a row. You did. That takes us to my number nine, which is The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Harem. Ooh, it's just me. Yes, yes. The movie is directed by Kenji Kamiyama. It's written by Jeffrey Addis, Phoebe Gittins, Will Matthews, and Artie Papa Georgiou. And it stars Brian Cox, Miranda Otto, Sean Dooley, and Luke Pascaliano. And the IMDb summary is the untold story behind Helm's Deep hundreds of years before the fateful war, telling the life and blood-soaked times of its founder, Helm Hammerhand, the king of Rohan. His name is Helm Hammerhand? I guess so. That's the dopest thing I've ever heard. This is mainly on my list because it's just off the strength of Lord of the Rings. Fair. I love Lord of the Rings. I love the movies. I really like the TV series The Ring of Power. I don't care what any of y'all out there say. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't care. I had a great time watching that show. And so I'm looking forward to watching this movie. Obviously, it's connected to 
the live action. Tr- oh, I didn't even mention the Hobbit movies. I like those well enough. <laughs> but uh, I, I assume that it's attached sort of to the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films, mostly because Miranda Otto is back playing Eowyn. Mm. So I would assume that that would be the connection. Uh, the film is going to be animated. So I am Ooh. very intrigued by that. Like that. Sounds fun. There's not much else to say about it. It's Lord of the Rings. I love the lore of Lord of the Rings. It's fantastic. It's a the lot lore of-, of the rings, if you will. Yes, the lore of the ring. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In and of itself. So yeah, I'm excited. Sounds yeah. like it's going to be a fun time. I don't. I don't need to say much else. It's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that takes us to number eight, Dallas. Let's see if you don't get skipped this time. All right, I think I can be safe in saying without being skipped, that my number eight is Mufasa, colon, The Lion King. You got it, son. Yes. Directed by Barry Jenkins, written by Jeff Nathanson, starring Aaron Pierre, Kevin Harrison Jr., Seth Rogen, Billy Eichner, and John Connie. This is the one I forgot. Hmm? This is the one I forgot. (laughs) You knew there would be. For those who don't know, Barry Jenkins made Moonlight and If Bill Street Can Talk, and Jeff Nathanson wrote Rush Hour 2. I learned that today. I do like Rush Hour 2. Me too. And I know that this movie won't be just Rush Hour 2 with Scar and Mufasa, but man, I can dream. I can dream that racist ass movie. Yeah, I love The Lion King. I am the biggest Lion King fan that you know, whoever you are listening to this. Don't question it. It's true. It is true. Yeah, I actually liked the 2019 Lion King, despite the fact that, you know, everyone else hated it. But the way I saw it, hey, it's The Lion King. (laughs) They didn't change anything, really. Jeff Nathanson also wrote that, but I didn't read it as one of his credits because. He essentially just copied and pasted the story. So sure, he quote unquote wrote it. But um, yeah, I like all things Lion King. I like One and a Half. I like Simba's Pride. Deception, Disgrace. Deception. Uh, we don't have Gabby here. But We're putting the sound bite in anyway. You, got, you know the sound bite. You know the one. Oh, Kovu. Gabby loves Kovu in a way that is different from the rest of us. No, she doesn't. It's, not, it's different from the rest of us on this show, but not different than a oh, lot of other people out a there. A lot of other people are getting down with uh, the furry thirst. And hey, if that's what y'all do, that's what y'all do. But yeah, Kelvin Harrison Jr. playing Scar is really interesting to me because I've seen him like once or twice and he has this scary energy to him. Like he played in that movie Loose, which is about the high schooler who looks 25 and might be a psychopath. And then he played in Waves, which is a movie that just made me upset. But he had that anger in him. And I was like, you could voice a good Scar. Why not? Mufasa, Lion King. If it got Lion King in it, I'm with it. Only reason it's not higher is because, you know, I don't have a trailer or anything. I haven't seen Aaron Pierre in anything except for, like, the faux trailer. And he's so... is a movie that came out with Sarah Sharonin and Paul Mescal and Aaron Pierre, obviously. Mm. And the husband gets offered a chance to go into... It's like a Black Mirror episode. Husband gets offered a chance to go into space. Mm. Mm. But he has to leave his wife there. But don't worry. We'll have a robot version of you down here with her. But that movie looked really interesting. I, I never saw it. But Aaron Pierre in that trailer was very, because he's the one who makes them the offer. Mm. And he's very intriguing. And in, just mm. in that trailer alone, it's just like, I am engaged. And he's going to be young Mufasa. So we'll see how that goes. All right. That's my number eight. I'm going to get skipped. Uh, my number eight is Deadpool 3. Oh, skip. Finally got to skip somebody. I know. That takes us to number seven. Number seven is da, 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 Untitled Venom Let There Be Carnage sequel. Oh, is it happening? It is. Oh, okay. Oh, well, look at that. that. I've been skipped. Three Cassie, times. what's your number seven? Yay! Sonic 3, Sonic 3. Let's talk about it. I am way more excited for Sonic 3 than I feel like I have any right to be because before Sonic 2 came out, I felt the way you did, kind of just like, oh yeah, Sonic 1 was fun. I don't really think about it too much. And then Sonic 2 came out and I was thinking, I like this way more than I expected. And then, spoilers for Sonic 2, the end. They show that they're going to do Shadow. And I was like, oh my God, it's Shadow. I just want him to bring out the Roscoe and black out, black out, everybody. And also, Idris Elba as Knuckles, everything I wanted it to be. So add that with Shadow. I don't know who's going to play Shadow, but I can't wait to find out. And it's just going to be delightful. Jim Carrey is just peak Jim Carrey energy in these movies. I don't even really understand it because in recent years, every time we've seen Jim Carrey or heard him speak, it just sounds so sobering. And then he gets in the Sonic movies and it's like, oh, it's the 90s again. Cool. He's Ace Ventura. I can't wait. Give Sonic his gun, his biscuit, his heater, his Roscoe, his insert your favorite term for a gun. I just let him light everybody up. <laughs> also, Sonic's story is, I mean, Shadow's story is just like weirdly dark. Like everything about Sonic is, I mean, Shadow is really dark, but like, how are you going to mix that with Ben Schwartz running around just being a goofball talking about chili dogs? And that's one thing I will give video games is they do not care. 
they're like yo we're gonna take this goofy ass hedgehog and give him the most depressing angsty broody antagonist and you're gonna love it gotta go fast like ramadan i think that's, that's all right yeah, that's that cool i think i'm getting skipped again my number seven is the fall guy you are getting skipped again look at you and that's because i know what dallas <laughs> likes number six guys number six my number six is argyle which is directed by matthew vaughn he made kick-ass x-men first class the kingsman movies my favorite x-men movie i think it might be mine too yeah like i have some issues as a comic book nerd who's really like in the source material but good movie written by jason i want to say fuchs it's f-u-c-h-s-s -S. yeah sounds about right yeah i don't I think it's the other fuchs because i don't want to say the alternative and uh he wrote ice age continental drift and and the story for wonder woman oh boy oh, <laughs> wonder woman is great wonder woman is great the movie stars so many people henry cavill bryce dallas howard sam rockwell brian cranston Catherine o'hara dua lipa ariana debose john cena and Samuel L. Jackson. And the summary is an introverted spy novelist is drawn into the activities of a sinister underground syndicate. It's funny because there's certain directors that their trailers and the movie just have a certain energy to me. Yep. Matthew Vaughn, David Leach, Guy Ritchie, very good action, very good comedy. Mm -hmm. This is just all of that. Like that trailer is just, mm, love it. I don't love Henry Cavill's haircut. I don't either. But as a Henry Cavill fan, just <laughs> telling you right now, I'm not a fan. It's of that so funny because I watched the new Hunger Games movie with JoJo. Obviously, I had seen this trailer before. She hadn't. So the trailer starts and she sees Henry Cavill and she's like, "Ooh!" And she sees his hair. She was like, "Ew!" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looks goofy as hell. He looks like a small soldier. Shout out to you if you remember that movie. I do. I love that movie. Great movie. Looks like Chip Hazard. I am just so ready for this movie. I love Sam Rockwell and his character is giving me like Mr. Right vibes. If you've seen that movie, wow. It's a spy rom-com-ish. It's really weird. But he plays this weird spy dude who's surprisingly good at being a spy. And he's giving me that energy. John Cena's there. Samuel Jackson is there. We love Samuel Jackson. I love Matthew Vaughn. It looks like he's being fun again. Because the King's Man, while good, I didn't have a lot of fun with it. And I'm Oh, I didn't ever saw that one. I just realized I never saw it. Yeah, it's uh, very different. It doesn't feel like a Kingsman movie at all. But still good. Hey, man, Scott Ranch. When we get Kingsman 3 back... I just want, I just want Sophie Cook some back, man. All right. What's her character's name? I can't even. Roxy. You, okay, yeah, I was Roxy. Say, you used to always say Roxy. And I was like, what? I forgot the name. But uh, yeah, our guy looks dope. It hit me like right as we were about to like, <laughs> right as I said, I don't remember it. It came back to mind. Also, Brian freaking Cranston. I love Brian Cranston. I love so many people involved with this. And someone that Demi loves is uh, Ariana DeBose. I do love Ariana DeBose. Is outside everywhere? of Henry Cavill. She keeps popping up and stuff. Yo, her agent getting her to beg. I think I saw her in two trailers yesterday. <laughs> You probably did. I think she has three trailers out. Surprised. She's in Craven. She's in Argyle. She's in the movie with and the Russians she's, in space. Yeah, ISS. And then she was just in Wish. Yep. Like, her agent is putting up Michael Jordan numbers. Like, <laughs> whoever that person is needs a raise because she's getting work. He said, you got an Oscar. We putting you in everything. Everything. Also, she's on that show, Schmigadoon. She wasn't in it much season two, which was unfortunate, probably because she, she got was doing 17 movies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, shout out to her. Shout out to Matthew Vaughn. Shout out to Argyle. Comes out in February. Cassie, what's your number six? <laughs> Jesus. It is called Untitled Venom. Let there be Carnage sequel, Cassie. Let's talk about let's talk about some aliens and some tongues and the lady who directed Fifty Shades. No, wrote Fifty Shades. Uh, Kelly Marceau. This is her directorial debut. She wrote Fifty Shades. She wrote The Venoms. She wrote Saving Mr. Banks. It is very important to me that we make the distinction that Cassie and I like Venom for different reasons. We both enjoy the movies. I enjoy comic books. Cassie enjoys monsters and their tongues. So that's you. I respect that. In addition to Tom Hardy, this movie also has Juno Temple, whom I love. And I'm going through major Ted Lasso withdrawal. So I will take any chance to see Keely. Sorry, Keely. And also has Chiwetel Ejiofor in some role I don't know. Just keep giving me random, very talented black actors. They did it with uh, Naomi Harris last time. Now it's Chiwetel. Let's keep it going. No idea what it's about. It doesn't even have a name. but aliens what that tongue do the movie that was your <laughs> that was your number six to me what's your number six i'm getting skipped again my number six is the book of clarence oh skip 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 was that like your last three yeah wow i know you <laughs> like, yeah you do so what's that take us to five yep top five top five, top five. Hey. all right this one is for the horror honeys oh. maybe cassie Lord. we'll see a quiet place day one is my number five it comes out June 28th, and it is written and directed by Michael Sarnowski, who directed the movie Pig, 
which I heard a lot about and didn't see. I still don't know what that is. The movie stars Lupita Nyong'o, Joseph Quinn, Alex Wolf, Jamal Hansu as Man on Island, and Denis O'Hare, which feels extremely disrespectful. Like, this is Jamal Hansu. You can give this nigga a name. You call him Man on Island. So they're like, okay, we know that's your name. Boom, you're Man on Island again. Summary is, in quotes, plot under wraps. Cool. I don't need to know what the plot is. I just know these movies are dope. Lupita Nyong'o is dope. Joseph Quinn is dope. Man on the Island is dope. So this one is not, obviously, it's not directed by John Krasinski. I love John Stewart's Jim Halpert as a horror director and actor. And I don't think he's doing either of those here because this is a prequel spinoff with other people. But like we talked about us earlier, Lupita Nyong'o is, can't really call her a scream queen for just us and that weird zombie kid movie she made. But if she keeps it up, she definitely could be because her performance in Us should have been nominated for whatever awards. But uh, yeah, all these movies are dope. This has a chance to become one of my favorite trilogies. I'm always intrigued by that when I like two really good movies and then they make a third one. I love A Quiet Place. It's my top five because it's dope. And I think the next one will be dope. All right, guys. My number five is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is directed by Wes Ball, written by Patrick Aysen. I think that's how you pronounce that last name. Josh Friedman, Rick Jaffa, and Amanda Silver. And it stars Kevin Durand, Freya Allen, and Peter Macon, and some other people, but IMDb doesn't have names for them, so I don't know how important to consider them. Well, Owen Teague, I think, is the protagonist. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're about, it's, you know, I, it's a bunch of apes. There you go. That, <laughs> yep. No, no, no. Anyway, IMDb synopsis. Many years after the reign of Caesar, a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define a future for apes and humans alike. I just really like the new series of planet of the apes movies i think they're all really really good yeah it is a little weird to go back into this series without matt reeves who did the last two yeah. movies he didn't do the first one even though rise of the planet of the apes is actually my favorite out of the trio but matt reeves is phenomenal yeah he didn't make the first one even though that's that? you know? i don't remember oh i just assumed they were all him no they were not i remember specifically that he only did the last two um but i really like the series and i didn't think that they were going to continue it I'm really interested to see what they do with it, especially with Wes Ball as the director. Also, Wes Ball has a very distinctive post-apocalyptic plant, nature, overgrowth, over-society visual tone to him. He does it a lot. He did it in Maze Runner. And the reason why he got Maze Runner was because he did it in a short film that he made, which is actually on the, short, on the Maze Runner DVD special features, I think. It's actually a really dope short film, as a matter of fact. Nice. So that visual look and style just is fitting in with this Planet of the Apes thing. So I think that's really, really cool. And it's written by several writers who have done things in recent years that we've all heard of or seen, I think. A couple of them did the live action Aladdin. A couple of them, they're working on the current Avatar movies. A couple of them did the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. That works. Yep. So I've done this before. Fantastic. The guy who did Rise of the Planet of the Apes is Rupert Wyatt. Yeah, I just found that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm excited to see where the series goes. I liked those first three movies, and I think it'll be interesting to finally get a movie that is actually within the time period of the Planet of the Apes, of like, the apes have now taken over. So what is that world like? Got you. Right. Also, I love Freya Allen because she's fantastic as Siri on The Witcher. Toss a coin to your nigga. I like all these movies, too. The reason it was so low on my list is because no Matt Reeves, no Andy Serkis. It's just it feels somewhat removed or as far removed as it can be. A little bit. Yeah. Same thing. But they haven't missed yet. Yeah. All these movies are really dope. I think it initially was pretty low on my list. It got higher because they released a trailer recently. Mm -hmm. And after watching the trailer, I was like, oh, yeah, this is happening. Oh, yeah, I like these movies. It's funny what you can do with just some voice acting and motion capture. Because when that one ape is like, what a wonderful day. Yeah. <laughs> he looks at the screen. I'm like, you look scary. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. But something about the way you just smiled. And said that me. quote. And I'm looking forward to finding out why. But yeah, that's my number five, which leads us to number four, guys. Number four. Number four, number four, number four, number four is Ballerina. Skip. Ooh, we're back to skipping me. All right. Cassie, what's your number four? It might get skipped. I don't know. Probably, actually. My number four is The Book of Clarence. Oh, skip. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, that was hey, hey. All right. On to you. I don't think my number four is getting skipped. My number four is Mean Girls. It is not getting skipped. Well, maybe. Oh, oh. oh. Well, I've been caught. Okay. Oh, skips. Thing. <laughs> Listen, you know, I didn't know if it was going to be on your list or not. We I, never know. I can't tell Cassie's with you. list means nothing. Exactly. It could be, <laughs> hey, I want to see this movie. It could be, this is a movie. That's the goal. <laughs> Anything that is a movie could be on your list. All right, top three, top three, top, top three. three. Dallas, what's your number three? My number three is The Fall Guy. 
directed by David Leach, who gave us John Wick, even though he didn't get credit for it, Deadpool 2, and Bullet Train, also Atomic Blonde, also Hobbs and Shaw. It is written by Drew Pierce, who wrote Iron Man 3, Hotel Artemis, and Hobbs and Shaw, and stars Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Winston Duke, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Hannah Waddingham, Stephanie Hsu, and more. Lee Majors is in this movie, and I didn't realize that Lee Majors was still alive. I don't know anything about Lee Majors, except he's in this movie. He was the original Fall Guy, and apparently still alive. Uh, he's in Saving Private Ryan, I believe. That sounds right. He's also in Big Fat Liar? I think that's what I know Lee Majors from, is Big Fat Liar. I'll take the word for it. Yeah. I know the name. I don't know who that is. I know he's an actor. We have summary. Colt Seavers is a stuntman who left the business a year earlier to focus on both his physical and mental health. He's drafted back into service when the star of a mega budget studio movie directed by his ex goes missing. This is one of those movies that I didn't need a trailer. It was going on my list. I found out David Leach is making a movie with Ryan Gosling and it's an action comedy with all these people in it. He made Bullet Train and I love that so much. And I love Ryan Gosling so much, but I love a specific type of Ryan Gosling. The nice guys, Ryan Gosling, is just made for me. And crazy stupid trailer, love, for Ryan Gosling. I love crazy stupid love too. But like this trailer is giving me such nice guys, Ryan energy when he's on that boat and he's about to run and jump off, and he's like, "No, too dangerous. It's got to be stairs." And they start shooting at him. Just everything he does, the physical comedy, he's great at the big himbo energy. He's great at like when he runs after, I think he falls off of something because that's what he does. And he runs up to Emily Blunt and she's like, oh my God, what happened? You look terrible. And he's like, you look amazing. <laughs> it's just, ah, uh, I love him. He's a big dumb dumb, and I love it. I'm going to be honest. I had no interest in this movie until the trailer came out. So it's a good trailer. It's a very good trailer because it looks like it's a very good movie. Yeah. Yeah. All the casting announcements. I was like, cool. <laughs> Cause I like all these people. I love uh, Emily Blunt. I think yeah. Emily Blunt is fantastic. But Ryan Gosling has never been an actor that I'm like, yeah, Ryan Gosling's in. I'm watching it. Like he wasn't for me until the Nice Guys. I've never, then it depends on what he's doing. I've never seen the Nice Guys, but even then, like, yeah, I like several Ryan Gosling movies. But it's just like Ryan Gosling is not the guy that I'm not like. That guy, yeah. Pal. yeah, he's not that guy. Um, and then like the supporting cast is cool too, but they're the supporting cast, not mm. the mains. So yeah, I don't know how much they're gonna be in it. Like I know it's gonna be mostly Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, but then. Even with it just as a supporting cast, and after seeing Bullet Train, I know David Leach can work with a big cast yeah. in a way that makes them feel all important. That movie has Michael Shannon, Hiro Yuki, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry. Joey King. Yeah, and none of those characters are the main one. No. But I would fight to the death that Lemon and Tangerine are the true stars of that movie because they're so good. That's what I think he can do. And like I said earlier, I'm going through Ted Lasso withdrawals. So Hannah Waddingham, hey. another movie. I will take it. I am very excited. When I saw her name on the cast, I was like, oh, Hannah Waddingham. Yeah. Because now I am also a Ted Lasso fan. So. <laughs> we love it. And I've liked her in other things even before I saw Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. But Ted Lasso is really what I've seen her mostly in. So it's like, hey. Yeah. We in here. I'm super hyped. I can't wait. Fall guy. Give it to me. David Leach is that dude. Give it to me. I'm worth it. Kathy, what's your number three? Top three. And this one is surprising that it's in there. But it is. So my number three. And I say this with a touch of game is oh. madam webb oh, oh interesting yeah i gotta be honest the movie looked like it slapped now you could say <laughs> to me and i might have brought this before kathy is it is the fact that the main character is named cassandra and has the power to see the future and therefore is named after the exact same person after which you named yourself does that have something to do with it I would say yes yes it absolutely does don't judge <laughs> me it's great that said it legitimately looks Super fun to me. You can see the future. She's going to hang out with some lady spider people and they're going to stop some guy from doing something because he's bad. I don't care about him, but it looks like fun. Like I watched that trailer expecting not to care and I was like, oh no, this actually looks really like my shit. I think I'm into this. Love that for you. Unlike the fall guy, I dedicated myself to seeing this movie after I saw the cast. So, <laughs> so I will be watching this. I did think that the trailer looked a lot of fun though. Even though I think I've also said on this podcast before, I think I can point out every single flaw that I'm going to have. Every problem I, I'm going to have with this movie, I can probably see it in the trailer trail. already. But it looks like fun. So I'm going to shut my brain off and have fun for a couple hours. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> just, I don't know, man. When this was announced, I was like, Madam Webb? The old lady from the cartoon? I'm still like that. And then it's Fifty Shades, Dakota Johnson. I love Dakota like Johnson. That's what it is. Madam Webb? Okay. Cool. And then they bring in. I don't know. The most anticipated, I don't want this to be the time for us to air our like Grievance. issues with movies, especially on other people's lists, despite the fact that Cassie just roasted the first two movies on her list. 
<laughs> but yeah, if you like it, I love it. I will never say that to anybody. <laughs> wow. You know that's the black code. Or, you know, not for me, but do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. My number three is Ballerina, which is directed hey. by Lynn Wiseman, written by Shay Hatton, and it stars Anna de Armas, Angelica Houston, Norman Reedus, Ian McShane, and Keanu Reeves is going to be in the movie. I don't think he stars in the movie. And apparently Lance Reddick is also in. That's what it says on Wikipedia, so I'll take it. That's what it says on IMDb as well, so. The late, great Lance Reddick. And to find out, the IMDb summary is a young female assassin seeks revenge against the people who killed her family. I like the John Wick franchise. Uh, so good. I still have not finished The Continental. Those episodes were too long. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> I got to watch the last one and I still haven't gotten around to it. It's I'll, basically just another movie. It's a movie and I'm just, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I want to do it yet. Although The Continental wasn't hitting for me the same way that John Wick hits for me. That being, yeah, that's fair. That being said, I'm still very excited about Ballerina. Yep. Um, I'm very excited to see what they do with it. I'm excited to see Ana de Armas play the action lead in something that's not ghosted. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because after her 10 minutes in, oh my gosh, No Time to Die, mm -hmm. she's so good in that 10 minutes, just 10, 10 minutes, man. And she's so good the entire time. The action, the acting, the charisma, the chemistry, it's all there. So I'm super stoked to see her in Ballerina, which is going to have some dope action Yeah, because that's what John Wick always brings. That's my thing is seeing her not only be the lead in an action movie, but a John Wick universe movie is she's going to be a lead in the action movie like it's gonna go crazy uh i can't wait i cannot wait i don't know if they're gonna make her russian it don't matter nothing really matters in john wick movies it's just hey that looks really dope do it again kick him down those 248 stairs you get back up do it again hit him with that car he's still alive hit him again yeah i don't know who she's gonna be killing or why well i guess because they killed her family but i'm with it plus shay hadn wrote like the other john wick movies and those are all dope so fantastic Amazing. Also, Shay Haddon wrote Rebel Moon. Haven't seen that. Yet. Well, we might have by the time this episode comes out. Yeah. Because time is the construct. construct. And uh, Lynn Wiseman directed the first two Underworld movies. Which I love. Which, yes, are a product of their time, but a great product of a great time. But yeah, Ballerina looks dope. We will be watching. And... At least some of us will. Yeah, we... Do me and I. And probably Gabby. Gabby likes the John Wick movies, too. Yeah. People who like fun like the John Wick movies. Lynn Wiseman directed Live Free, Die Hard, and I like that yeah. movie. That was the first Die Hard movie I ever saw. And Which it, one is that? That's the fourth one with Justin Long. Okay. That was the one that got me into the series as a whole. And Interesting starting. I now am a huge lover of Die Hard movies. So Wherever you get on the freeways, wherever you get on the freeway, that's your ent entrance ramp. I don't know. I lost the analogy. You don't Ballerina. even drive. Why are you making this analogy? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I couldn't do it. Uh, anyway, what was that? Your number what? That was my number three. No, leading us three. to number two. Number two, number two, number two. Shut up, Cassie. My number two is The Book of Clarence. Hey. Do we all have that? Yes. Love yeah. that. It is written and directed by James Samuel, who became one of my favorite directors after one movie. What a thing to do. It stars Lakeith Stanfield, Omar Sy, RJ Kyler, Anna Diop, David Oyelowo, <laughs> Afri Woodard, Tiana Taylor, Caleb McLaughlin, James McAvoy, and Benedict Cumberbatch, even though I can't find that white man in the trailer. Michael Ward is also in this movie. Michael Ward as well. And I did not know, and I'm very excited. Who is Michael Ward? He is most well known for Top Boy, which you haven't watched. Top Boy! Top Boy. Uh, he's Top Boy, isn't he? Food man. Oh, yeah, the summary. Struggling to find a better life, Clarence is captivated by the power of the rising messiah and soon risks everything to carve a path to a divine existence. I wonder if Cumberbatch is playing God. Oh, you think maybe that's why he's not in the trailer? It could be like the voice of God or something. I don't know how I feel I, about that with everybody else being black. Yeah, but. Like don't make God white, especially after the one of my favorite lines in The Heart of They Fall. I've seen the devil. Rufus Buck ain't him. The devil is white. Maybe Bennett can rest play Satan. But uh, just bring it yourself but back to play God. He's playing a character named Benjamin. Don't know what that means, but that's the name. Do you know any Bible Benjamins? I mean, yes, but I don't think they're not. The only Benjamin that comes to mind from the Bible is during the time of Joseph, because that's his younger brother. Hmm. No, couldn't tell you. But uh, yeah, this movie basically it looks like we just got Advent. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it gives like scammers in Bible times, and I'm with it. I love R.J. Kyler. I love Lakeith Sanfield. I love James Samuel. Like I said, James Samuel also I think is probably scoring the movie because he scored The Heart of They Fall, and he is a musician, aka the Bullets. And just he is doing the music, yeah. Love it. He's so good at everything. It's kind of weird how good he is at everything. This is another one like The Fall Guy, where I knew the movie was coming out, and I put it on my list regardless. I didn't need a trailer. I saw James Salmon made a movie. He's back with Lakeith, Cherokee Bill, 
and RJ Kyler. Hell is his name? Jim. Beck. Jim. Jim Beckworth. Thank you. See? I don't know why I only got the beginning of the <laughs> name, but I, knew, but I knew it was Beck. Yeah, we got there as a team. It looks so dope. I'm kind of surprised Cassie had, had it on her list. But also Cassie's list just means I know this movie's coming out. So is this like a you like it or you think you'll like it or you might want to see it or you think it's going to suck? What is it? The premise of this is a dude impersonating Jesus. Like that scene <laughs> of Jesus when Jesus is also around doing Jesus things. Like that is hilarious to me. And I know that Jesus shows up in this movie because he they talk about him in the trailer and like, oh my God, you're Jesus. Jesus is in the trailer. Yeah. So I'm just excited to see how it goes. You know, it's going to be the typical, like, rise and fall of, like, he's going to find success scamming people, but then, oh, man, Jesus is going to come calling. And it's just... Is is he? You can impersonate, you know, someone, a, a person, and that's fine. But Jesus? Like, that's not going to end well. And I want to know. I also want to know. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I love the hard they fall. <laughs> we talked about the trailer recently on this podcast, and I was just talking about how I really like James Samuel's style mm-hmm. of taking certain genres that Black people are not in and just filling them with Black people. Yeah. So Westerns, Black cowboys, which, by the way, there were a lot of Black cowboys in yep. historical times. Lone Ranger. Yep. And then now this, like, a biblical epic with Black people, which seems more likely <laughs> to uh, be yeah. accurate. And I just like that he does that sort of stuff. And he just has a certain style of humor that I really appreciate so far, just based off of one movie. So it's kind of like a Jordan Peele situation where like you watch one movie and you're like, oh, you've got a lot of talent and I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah. Forward. And that's like where Cassie was or like Ryan making Gittler. a movie. I saw on my list that was going to be me. If I just knew James Samuel's making a movie, I would have just wrote whatever James Samuel's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably be pretty high up. It's a way that I felt about Ryan Coogler as well when I saw Fruitvale Station and then Creed and then Black Panther. Yeah. You know? Man, don't miss. Don't miss. But yeah, I do love, like you said, that James Samuel just puts black people in places that the whites aren't used to seeing them. And <laughs> my I, mind just not started, just them, just people in general. My mind just started rolling and like different ways that he could do that. Like <laughs> He could make like a Wes Anderson movie. Just put a bunch of niggas in it. That'd be great. I would love it. But yeah, whatever he wants to do. I'm with it. I'm gonna watch it. Give me all the James Samuel movies and please put RJ Kyler in all of them because he's my favorite. I think he's my favorite part of How Do They Fall. No, it's hard. It's really hard. Too many. Regina King. It's amazing. Oh my God. Zazzy. Amazing. Zaz- oh, see, there's too many. But yeah, I'm here for it. I'm ready for the soundtrack. It's gonna slap. Cassie, what's your number two? My number two is Mean Girl. All right, hold up. Before we start talking about Mean Girls, let me do my intro for it. Okay. <laughs> thing. All right. Mean Girls is directed by Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr. It's written by Tina Fey and it stars Angari Rice, Renee Rapp, Ali E. Cravalo, Christopher Briney, Avantika, B.B. Wood, Jaquel Spivy, John Hamm, Tim Meadows, and Tina Fey. And the IMDb summary is new student Katie Heron is welcomed into the top of the social food chain by the elite group of popular girls called the Plastics, ruled by the conniving Queen Bee, Regina George, and her minions Gretchen and Karen. However, when Katie makes the major misstep of falling for Regina's ex-boyfriend Aaron Samuels, she finds herself prey in Regina's crosshairs. As Katie sets to take down the group's apex predator with the help of her outcast friends Janice and Damien, she must learn how to stay true to herself while navigating the most cutthroat jungle of all. High school. Yeah, it's Mean Girls. Yeah. <laughs> the well, it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I chose the one that the actual studio wrote instead of just like the, the mm. basic description. The difference is this one's a musical. It is. Yeah. And I love musicals. <laughs> to be accurate, this is a musical movie based on a musical based on a movie. So what I'm hearing, I've watched a couple of interviews from the cast and Tina Fey, and they're actually describing it as a blend of a remake and of the Broadway musical, because it's not a straight adaptation of the Broadway musical. Right. Yeah, so I don't know how to take that. I've never seen the Broadway musical. I might have by the time we Nor have release I. this episode. I'm super excited. I initially was down for the movie just because Ali was in it. It's Moana. I love Moana. We she's love playing Moana. Janice. She's great. And I was like, that's cool. I like Baby Woods. She's in Love, Victor, and she's great on that show. I was like, yeah, this is cool. Dope. And then? And then I fell in love with Renee Rapp. <laughs> Yo, I gotta see this movie. I can't wait. The interesting thing about this movie is that it was made to be a direct-to-streaming movie. And then at some huh. point during, I think, the strike, they were like, no, we're gonna put it in theaters. I'm super stoked. I love the original Mean Girls. Like, it came out when we were yeah. 12. And yeah. it is one of the most iconic comedies to come out in the 2000s. Like, we still quote that movie. And it's been 20 years since it came out. <laughs> Did Tina Fey write the original? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, it looks like Mean Girls. <laughs> it looks like Mean Girls. I'm waiting for Cassie to add more. I don't want to like take over the entire segment because right. it's your number two. It's only my number four. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I there we go. want to be excited for it. I'm just confused by what it is and why it exists. But because they made a musical, so make a musical. I mean, I feel like it can't be. That's what they do. Well, I feel like it it can't be bad because the bones of it are Mean Girls at the end of the day. So whatever they do with it, as long as it's still Mean Girls in some form, I'm going to rock with it. It's kind of like Dallas with it's Lion King. So I'm going to like it. Yeah, which is weird because I don't think Cassie usually feels that way about remakes. I feel like she is usually on the why does this even exist? Well, she's still on that train. Yeah. Yeah. Cassie on two trains at once. Multi-track drifting, come on now. Yeah, run all them trains. I am curious and looking forward to seeing how they modernize Mean Girls, because obviously yeah. this is now a day and age where we have social media, where we have smartphones. It's a different world than it was literally back in 2004. Even just like, yes, Damien was gay in the, in the original movie, but like there's not much diversity in the original movie if you, want, if you look back on it. Okay. Yeah. And now if you look at this new version, we have an Indian Karen. We have a black Damien. We might have a lesbian Regina George. Sorry, I just, the phrase Indian Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, they've expanded a little bit more to make it more inclusive. Oh, um, we have a Hawaiian Janice. Yeah. So, you know, we've changed things up. Tina Fey was talking about how she kept the burn book a physical book because there's power in the physicality of this book. Um, but the book gets to blow up a lot more because social media is now a thing. So it'll blow up on social media as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out. A lot of people are like, it'll not, never be better than the original. It's like, yeah, bro, it's not like there's, there's no competition. Like they're not even trying to compete with it. They're just making a, a new iteration and adaptation of it. And uh, you know, Tina Fey is still involved. These are still her characters that she's writing and she even wrote the Broadway musical. So oh, nice. Yeah, her and her husband. I think her husband did the music for it, and he did the music for this movie as well. Alongside, I think I heard in an interview that Renee Rapp also co-wrote several songs for the movie as well, including the song that they just released for uh, her and Megan Thee Stallion called Not My Fault. I have to. I always have to ask when you bring up Renee Rapp. Yeah. Good tits, big heart? Yes, good tits, well, big heart. Yeah. Good tits, big heart. I, that's going to become a soundbite at this point. It's it's just, every time she pops up, we're just going to yeah. play that one People bit of have song. Certain... Just want some recognition. Having good tits and a big heart. Cassie looks a little concerned. You good, Cassie? Are you going to tell me that's not a lyric in one of her songs? It does. Anyway, I think also there's an added excitement for me about this movie is because I've made plans around this movie. Like I'm planning on doing like a teen movie day mm -hmm. that has now become like, oh, not only are we going to do a teen movie marathon, but we're also going to make it so that it's scheduled around us also going to see the main girls musical in theaters. Right. And so like, that's exciting. It's not just like, oh, the movie itself. It's also like, oh, I'm planning to like, this is like an event now, like to do with friends. So that kind of adds to the excitement, which is probably why it's so high up on my list. Makes sense. But yeah, it looks like fun. Yeah, it does. Sometimes the like events or activities surrounding the movie can enhance the yeah. enjoyment. And again, I love musicals. You do. So I'm down. <laughs> I'm already preparing myself to ship Regina and Janice. Let's do this. <laughs> that's your style. But that takes us to my number two, which is Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. It's a funny bit. Skin. I knew it. There we go. Look at that. If anybody was going to get me. All right, guys. And that takes us to our number ones. But before we do that, we have Gabby's list since she was unavailable to make it. Yeah, she is alive. We found that out over the course of recording. All right. So her number 10 is The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Raharim. Number nine, Wicked, part one. Number eight, Ballerina. Number seven, Challengers. Number six, Furiosa, Mad Max Saga. Number five, Argyle. Number four, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which if she had been here, I would have been like, oh, snap, I forgot that was a thing that's happening. That should have been on my list. Well, it should have been on my honorable mentions. Mm. Number three, Mean Girls, the musical. Number two, Dune Part Two. And number one, Deadpool Three. Yeah. All right. So number one, Dallas. My number I know what one it is, but. Is just like Abby's. It is untitled Deadpool film. I assume it's just Deadpool Three. Yeah, Sean. Uh, man, I never know if his name is Levy or Levy. I think it's Levy. I'm going to say that. Sean Levy was like, no, that's actually not the title. What? We're working on it. <laughs> yeah. So, Untitled Deadpool film directed by Sean Levy. I, I don't like when movies start off with like one title convention uh -huh. and then change it. <laughs> oh, like going Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and then not Deadpool 3. Yeah. Because we did the, or, John like, Wick did the same thing. 
Yeah, John Wick, John Wick Chapter 2, John Wick 3 Parabellum, John Wick Chapter 4? Yes. Yeah. I don't think John Wick 2 is even Chapter 2. I think it's just John Wick 2. Maybe. I don't know. Stick to your naming yeah, convention. Every movie. I mean, the infamous case is Fast, Fast and the Furious. as the worst naming yeah. conventions in the world. Well, no, no. To be fair, Fast and the Furious, every single one is different. So the naming convention <laughs> is fine. Just change it. Yeah. Just change it every one. That's fine. I think my biggest issue was just... You can't do three Wait, fast, three fourth period. one was just Fast and Furious. To be fair, though, that was almost a reboot of the entire franchise, so that kind of makes sense. I hate when they do that. Just because it's like, like when they rebooted Halloween and called it Halloween. It's like, nigga, this is the yeah. third movie called Halloween. We got like, mixed up. Because when you think about it, it was the, fa- it was the Fast and the Furious, mm-hmm. Too Fast, Too Furious, Tokyo Fast Drift. and Furious, Tokyo Drift. But then it was like another... So they're like, we'll start over. Fast kind of, but it was like, we start over, but with like the same cast from the first movie. Mm, okay. So it was kind of a soft reboot. So they took the thuzz out for some reason. Giving DC Universe. Yeah. Confusing. Not really. Not as Not confusing if you're as into DC. It. Deadpool film, untitled, directed by Sean Levy, who made Date Night, This Is Where I Leave You, Free Guy. He has a lot of range. Sometimes he's silly, sometimes he's not. It is written by a bunch of people. Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, Zeb Wells, Ryan Reynolds, and Sean Levy. Oh. Stars. Hmm? Wendy uh, Molino and Lizzie Molino Loughlin as well. They are not they on Wikipedia. The, they are on IMDb, and they were the original writers of the movie. All right, well, I'm going by Wikipedia. The movie stars Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Miranda Baccarin, Brianna Hildebrand. And to be honest, who knows who else? There's a lot going on with this one. And the summary is Wolverine's here now. Wolverine joins the Merc with a Mouth in the third installment of the Deadpool film franchise. If you know me, you know I like two things, The Lion King and Deadpool. So obviously Deadpool is going to be on the list. I love the first two movies. I love Ryan Reynolds. I love this character. I love Wolverine. Hugh Jackman is great. He's been playing Wolverine for like 45 years. Thought he was done. He thought he was done. Everyone thought he was done. And now he's back. Only for this, though. Only for this. Apparently, they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And I love that. And I love that he and Ryan are buddies. And I hope I never find out that's not the case. They seem to be. Yeah. They just seem like... They go to sports guys. games and stuff together. I love that. I think they were at that Chiefs game with Taylor Swift earlier this year. I saw last, that picture. Last year. Yeah. I've heard a lot of things about this movie. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a multiverse movie, first off. I wouldn't be surprised. That makes a lot of sense. Especially after the Marvel's scene that we got yeah and just with the way that deadpool takes nothing seriously they mm-hmm. could have so much fun with the multiverse they've kind of done it here and there like the scene with all of the x-men in that room and in the first movie he's like i'm taking you to the professor he's like is it mcavoy is it Stuart?" but when you put him in an actual multiverse movie god it's gonna be such chaos deadpool is one of those characters and ryan reynolds is one of those actors who you're either really gonna like it well, you're not. <laughs> and he's like cilantro, how some people love it and some people think it tastes like soap. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never considered that. This might be genetic too. Shut up, cousin. Uh, <laughs> like you're on one side or you're on the other side. And I'm on the cilantro is great. Put all of it on my tacos. I also really love the Deadpool movies, which is why this movie is on my list. Not yeah. just because it's a Marvel movie, but because I love Deadpool. Mm-hmm. And I love these movies. And I'm very happy that Marina Baccarin is back. Yes, because I didn't know she was going to be. Well, nobody knew. Marina Baccarin was like, uh, no, they haven't called me back to be in it. And then a week later, they were like, Marina Baccarin's been cast. I was, <laughs> I was getting real worried because I was like, not after all we done been through with these first two movies. If right. I don't have her in this they movie. to bring her back. Oh, my gosh. And they did. Yeah, it's exciting. The idea of Deadpool interacting with Wolverine and quite possibly a lot of other cameos that we've uh, had rumored. I won't say it on here because maybe it's a spoiler. Maybe people don't want that spoiled for them. Yeah, that's why I stopped at uh, the people who were in these movies already. But yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with it, especially now that Deadpool is in the MCU. That kind of changes things up just a little bit. Um, just, yeah. It's still going to be rated R. It's still going to be crazy and wild and stuff. But it, it'll be interesting to see uh, how Deadpool gets to interact with all these characters now that he is within the MCU, how he gets to comment on them. There's only one rumor that I kind of want to be true because I think it would be hilarious. And I'm going to say it just because I don't feel like it's a spoiler because there's no confirmation. There are no set photos, nothing. It's just like a random rumor that came out of the woodworks. Mm-hmm. Which is that Taylor Swift is playing Dazzler. <laughs> I want that so bad. That's kind of great. Like, it would be amazing. It would be really good casting. Yeah, especially because, like, she's Ryan Reynolds' friend. Yeah. Like, actually, like, she's best friends with Blake Lively, a.k.a. Ryan Reynolds' wife. Right. So it's like, yo, Taylor, you got time today to just come on set and just do this real quick role for us? Like, And Dazzler is a pop star yeah. in X-Men. She don't do a whole lot else. So, like, it's not like you need Taylor to come in and do a bunch of scenes and fight a bunch of people. 
she could just sing, make some sparks. Dazzler does that in one of these movies. Already. He does it in the last one. In, yeah. uh, in and we're like, is that Dazzler? And Dark Phoenix, going. played by an actress who I love, as a matter of fact, Halston Sage. Um, oh, that was her? <laughs> Halston Sage is really great. She's really dope. I didn't become a fan of hers until after that when she was on Prodigal Son. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you could pull in Taylor Swift for a day, have her film a real quick Dazzler cameo. And then she doesn't even have to play Dazzler for the rest of like the MCU span. Yeah. It could just be a multiverse thing where this is one version of Dazzler. Yeah. And it's Deadpool, so like, yeah, people are like, was that Dazzler? Sure. <laughs> like when if they want to bring her back in a more substantial role yeah. as a character, we'd be like, we're seeing Deadpool. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Also, the second movie, um, Ryan Reynolds has he wears a sweatshirt that has Taylor Swift's cats yeah. in front of it. Like, they're really good friends. I'd, so that rumor, I don't know if there's anything substantial to it outside of the fact that she is friends with Ryan Reynolds and his wife. Mm. Yeah, I'm with it. Just whatever chaotic nonsense they're gonna give me, so many I good am jokes. with it. I am with it. I'm about it. Yeah. And that's my number one. Cassie, we already know what your number one is, but please yeah. tell us again. What is your number one? My number one is Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. And here's a fun fact that I just learned. There's a character in it named Rictus Erectus. And mm -hmm. I <laughs> <laughs> there's also a character named Piss Boy, I believe. Oh, um, okay. Well, that, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> The movie is directed by George Miller, written by George Miller and Nick Lotharis, and it stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth. Uh, IMDb summary is the origin story of renegade warrior Furiosa before her encounter and team up with Mad Max. Yeah. Mad Max Fury yeah. Road is the only Mad Max movie I've seen, and this will be the second one, and I'm not going to bother watching the others because I don't want to for various reasons, but also <laughs> because Fury Road King slaps, and I just can't see anything else measuring up. I have watched all of them. And Fury Road is absolutely the best out of all of them. I think you would like Beyond the Thunderdome, but Fury Road is absolutely the best, period. Mm. It's so good. And Furiosa was easily one of the best parts of it. So, like, I'm not usually into origin stories, but the world of Mad Max is weird enough that I have no idea what to expect. Like, you could lose the arm in a cooking accident. I have no idea. Like, it's, it's weird. It's wacky. There's going to be cars on fire. Everybody loves it. I'm so down. Yeah, the Mad Max movies are pretty, pretty zany and certain. It's weird. It's a very weird combination of like really wacky kind of zany stuff, but also really dark stuff as well. Like a lot of dark subject matter. I think like in the first movie, his wife and daughter get run over by a car and his daughter is like an infant. Yikes. It's like extremely dark and yet still there are these zany wacky aspects to these movies and it somehow still all works really really well together i've been sad that Charlize theron is not returning mm. as furiosa because like i said fury road is amazing but i am getting more into anya taylor joy as an actress because i hadn't seen much of her work before this year last year so i am excited to see her play furiosa and see what she brings to the table as the younger version of this character and it's, i just can't wait to see what george miller is doing with this movie because yeah the last one was just so ridiculous and cool and i've said on the podcast one of the greatest action movies ever made so i wonder what he'll bring to the table with this one and what it'll be about and what we're going to be doing and this was lower on my list i think i had this at number seven until the trailer came out mm. and then it was like nope jump that all the way up mm -hmm. like i just i don't know what to expect and i'm 100 percent fine with that because it's going to be a fun time and it's going to probably yeah. look super good it looks like Fury Road, Fury Road so I'm beautiful. Yeah, it does. It looks like Fury Road, and one of the things that I loved about Fury Road was that um, George Miller said that he always knew that he, when he was making this movie, that he wanted it to be very colorful because we have a tendency, especially nowadays, to make apocalyptic films where every there's no color anywhere. Mm. It's all desaturated and color. flat looking, and he was just like, "No color, color, color." And then we have the black and chrome version, which is the black and white version of the film, right. which is also very interesting to watch on value alone and this is me getting way too deep into color theory but yeah it's great regardless of what version you're watching dope, dope, dope. all right and that takes us to my number one our last movie of the day as well as desert number two movie on oh, yeah. my list my number one is dune part two directed by denis villeneuve and written by denis villeneuve and john spates and it stars timothy chalamet zendaya rebecca ferguson josh brolin 
Austin Butler, Lawrence Pugh, Dave Batista, Christopher Walken, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Leia Sado, Stellan Skarsgård, Charlotte Rampling, and Javier Bardem. And the IMDb summary is, this follow-up film will explore the mythic journey of Paul Atreides as he unites with Chani and the Fremen while on a war path of revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. Facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the known universe, he endeavors to prevent a terrible future only he can foresee. Hey guys, I'm so ready to be back in my Dune hyperfixation. <laughs> Just copy and paste everything I said last year when this was number one on my most anticipated list. Oh, yeah. Year. This is year number two with this on my list. I sure hope it comes out next year. <laughs> this year, it still will never be New Mutants being on Dallas's list like three years. Yeah, right. that was a, a streak. A doozy. It was going. It was, it was never coming off that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dune Part 2. I freaking was obsessed with the first movie. For me, like, it was... It's weird making this comparison. I hate comparing Star Wars and Dune, but it was like mm. my adulthood Star Wars. Mm. Like as a kid, when I discovered Star Wars, I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I loved every little bit of it, every piece of it. And I wanted to just consume everything that I could of it. And it's kind of the same with Dune after I saw the first movie that Denis Villeneuve did, because I saw the 80s film and who oh boy. Um, man. <laughs> man, what a movie. What a movie. But every time I think about what's to come in part two, I do think about at this point, I know the story because I've seen the 80s movie. Right. And I think about like what's in that last half of that movie that we haven't gotten to for part two. And Man, the idea of what Villeneuve is going to do with that, sickening. <laughs> Absolutely sickening. Denis Villeneuve doing a straight up war movie, but like a sci-fi war movie, it's going to be epic. <laughs> like if I thought the first movie was epic, I can't even imagine what part two is about to be because he has said that part one was purposefully slow and methodical and thoughtful. It's very much a setup for this war that's about to happen in part two and that part two is more action heavy and more of a war movie and i'm just like yes i can't wait to see that because yes i loved the thoughtful slowness of the first movie was obsessed with it and mm. now i get the war part of it and it's just oof and it's gonna be so long <laughs> and i can't wait I'm deeply hoping that they do an IMAX double feature for this film so that I can watch them both back to back in IMAX and just enjoy it. After seeing Wonka, I think that I am officially a Timothy Chalamet fan. I just think that he's so talented and has so much range, can do so many things. And I think that he's always done like these really dramatic roles and I love him as Paul Atreides. And this is also my favorite role of Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica. So yeah. She has some good roles too. She's had some pretty good she's, roles. She's but. Good. Lady Jessica is my favorite to watch her in. Zendaya is actually going to be in this one. And then, <laughs> and then we have the newcomers of Florence Pugh and Austin Butler. Austin Butler, I've been a fan of for years and getting to see him play Fade Rotho, where he gets to just be a monster is super exciting. But also just, I love the idea of Fade Rotha as a foil to Paul Atreides and the history that's there. And I'm wondering how Denis Villeneuve will introduce it. And Florence Pugh and Timothy Chalamet have had a lot of chemistry in Little Women. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Princess Irulan. I'm going to try and finish reading the book before this movie comes out. Since I've, you know, gone back to reading now. I read, <laughs> I read four books in two months, which is something I haven't done in a very long time. So I'm hoping to keep up that streak. Yeah. And I'm going to add Dune to my reading list ASAP. Dune part two. I just, everything about that movie makes me happy. And I cannot wait for part two to come out. I'm happy that part two even is going to exist because when part one came out and it said Dune part one on the title, I was like, ooh, um, okay, I hope we get there because <laughs> we were still in the pandemic. Yeah. And it was like, if this doesn't make enough money in a pandemic, we're not going to get part two. It's just going to say Dune part one forever. Yeah, that'd be rough. And I, that was a time when we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, and I'm tired of things that I like being canceled and me never getting to know how they end. It's exhausting. No one, no one wants that. I just want my stories to end, guys. Anyway, <laughs> that's my number one, Dune Part 2. That's it. That's the end of not only our most anticipated movies of 2024, but our year in review. Yep, yep, yep. We did it. And you got through all of it, or you just listened to this one. Whatever, either way, we, we, thanks. We appreciate it. And speaking of thanks, thank you to Grand Digital, Brandon and Io. You put us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for the people. To me, thank you for editing and putting us on YouTube, repping for the fans of the desert movies. Yeah, there's a number of them on here. Yeah, which is, you know, people like the things. The Rock likes the jungle, you like the desert. I don't know if I like the desert, but <laughs> I certainly like it in my movies. Yeah. Cassie, thank you for giving us so much support for our allegations of you being a horror fan. 
stay consistent to who you are. Never beaten the allegations. Never. Audience, what you? Cassie's just looking down in shame. <laughs> um, audience, what do you think of our list? What movies are you looking forward to? Is it the desert? Is it Deadpool? Is it the musicals? Is it the musicals? Are you like Cassie? And you're like, I don't even know if I want to see this movie, but it's coming out, so it's on my list. If you are, explain yourself in the comments. Or you can hit us on Twitter at y'all underscore different, Instagram and Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast, Facebook.com slash Creative Differences PC, or TikTok at Creative Differences Pod. If you have theories about what might happen in Untitled Third Deadpool film, hit me up with them. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter at a king named Simba. If you want to talk to me, what, what 2024 movie are you most afraid of? Whatever that means for you. <laughs> You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sassy Stoops there. Hey guys, you guys can talk to me about any of the four. It's just my top four, mostly. That's mostly what I want to talk about. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Demi underscore Jua. I'm just going to give you guys my Twitter from now on because I don't do any talking on Instagram. Like, what, what's the point? That's fair. Yeah, so just find me on Twitter at Demi underscore Jua. Jua is spelled J-O-I-E. Thanks again for joining us. Tune in next time. We will hopefully be doing a reaction throwback Thursday in honor of Mean Girls. So we'll be watching the uh, the original movie. Yeah, that's going to be a time. Oh, Back to the 2000s. It'll be hilarious. I did not leave the South Side for this. Yes! I can't wait. Uh, I love that line. Can't wait. Yeah. And if you want to find Gabby, because we couldn't, she's on Twitter at Rictus Erectus, because what a name that is. Had to bring that back. All right. It's been different. Bye. Bye. Okay. So this tag is for Cassie. Ooh. Uh oh. I'm afraid. I love that it's not for me. Demi, please hold all comments until the end. Okay. Cassie, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What do you think describes Demi better? Uh -oh. Enthusiast or kind of sore. I hate you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go with guys. I can't. Enthusiast. We're not <laughs> connoisseurs to me. Hold on. He said hold the comments. Just again. Connoisseur to me this. is somebody who collects and has these things. She doesn't have these. She just idolizes them from afar. And so I think I'm collecting. Enthusiast. <laughs> okay, never mind. She does it herself. She's a connoisseur. Okay, never mind. I love it. <laughs>